Well, good morning, and I um, want to do a little reframing of the questions, and when we finalize our final two, I'll reread them so everybody knows exactly what we're going to do. But we want to make sure that the conversation focuses really on this topic, which is this link between suicide prevention and serious mental illness. Um, and so I want to shift the focus a little bit more. SAMHSA defines, and, and Richard, help me out here if I get this wrong, is uh, serious mental illness is any mental illness in which there's a functional impairment. So we're talking about mood disorders, schizophrenia spectrum disorders, um, anxiety disorders. In terms of substance abuse, substance abuse is considered when it co-occurs with these other disorders. So just so we have the landscape that of this of this conversation, um, and so I want to read what the new questions are. You all have copies of the questions, right? So you can read along and sort of see how I change these as you think about which two we want to do. Health systems need better ways to capture suicide-related outcomes for people with serious mental illness so they can improve the quality of their suicide prevention efforts with this population. Second question, systems of care need better options for financing um, so that they can better support suicide prevention with people with serious mental illness. On the third question, it's the same, but I just added the word serious before mental illness. The fourth question, clinical providers need suicide prevention to be embedded in their scope of work. Oh, sorry, clinical providers with um, working with people with serious mental illness need suicide prevention to be embedded in the scope of their work so they can be better prepared to identify and reduce risk of suicide in this population at unique risk. Um, and there was actually a meta-analysis that came out yesterday on suicide risk for schizophrenia that sort of highlights some of these unique risk factors. What policy... <coughs> And it was published in Schizophrenia Bulletin, for those of you interested. What policy changes are needed to make it more feasible for health systems to implement suicide prevention efforts for the seriously mentally ill population? And the last question would remain the same. So based on that, I think we're going to take a show of hands for which question. So take a look. There's a number of the questions, one, two, three four, five, six, seven. We're going to take a show of hands, and whichever question has the most votes, that's what we're going to do when you get two votes. OK? What can be done to better ass assess risk and improve access to care for people with serious mental illness at risk for suicide? Yes, I did, Jerry. Thank you. Sorry about that. Would it help if I did kind of a three-word recap of each question just so you have a reminder of what they are? So the first one is um, health systems better capturing suicide-related outcomes. The second is um, financing. The third is um, integration of care. The fourth is um, the scope of work of clinical providers. The fifth is um, assessing risk and improving access to care. The sixth is policy changes for health systems. And the seventh is the seventh is the, um, the relationship with social determinants. So thinking about all of those in terms of people with serious mental illness and um, their suicide risk. Okay, so how many people? You get two votes. How many people want to talk about the health systems one? Data capture. Okay, two people. How many people? The um, financing. OK, five. More for that. How many people for the integrated care across systems? One, two, three, six. Two votes, right, you get two votes. We are not in Chicago. All right. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> sorry, number seven. Uh, the number four is clinical providers. OK, number five is risk assessment and access to care. That seven, I think, six or seven. Okay, policy changes. Four, okay, and social determinants. 
Okay, so it looks to me, honestly, like there's two groups of people, <laughs> is really what it is, if I'm getting this right. It looked to me like there was a people who wanted to do sort of the financing policy stuff, that there was that financing policy crew, and that there was, oh, uh, sorry, health systems data capture financing policy crew, and then there was this systems of care, or not systems of care, there's patient, family, clinical provider, risk, social determinant crew. Is that right? There's the more policy wonk people and the more direct service people. Did I get that right? And that that was sort of how the votes went. So I'm wondering if what we want to do is have sort of the policy wonk finance crew is one crew and the, the, the patient family care stuff is the other crew and that within that we do this work. Does that, yeah, does that divide it up well? Administrators and operations. Mm-hmm. Right. And we divide, and we have those of us who do both and don't know where to go. Right. <laughs> and then you just have to figure out. Right. So, all right. So we need, we need two facilitators for each of those groups, right? Um, yeah. I think um, because we have a number of facilitators, you can also just self-select into which group you're in. And then when you get into the rooms, um, you can just figure out amongst you who wants to lead and who, you know, you, you then can be off the, off the hook in terms of responsibility. We also have two potentially different ways to approach um, the problem, and so I think as a group we could take a minute and think about which one we're most interested in following. Um, we have kind of a group design, solution design way, and then also um, a facilitation approach that's more about figuring out what your, your organization and you as an individual can do. Um, there's some bleed over there as well, but... We'll kind of let each group land where it most wants to be. Um, I would suggest that we use rooms 114 and 118 because they're a little bit smaller and they also, I think, have whiteboards and all the materials that they need. And I know that Andre knows where 118 is and Margo knows where 114 is. <laughs> so they're the two here in the front. Um, I'll give Andre the policy financing um, group, uh, systems, what can happen in assistance of care. And then um, Marco will at least lead the way for the integration of care across patient needs. For lack of a better way to sum Wait, I'm sorry. So who's in 114? Um, 114 is the um, sort of provider level integration okay. of care. 118, Andre, who just stood up, is the policy system. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, so we can break and proceed. Oh, yes, question. Was it, um, what happens after this? Um, we'll come back and regroup. Yeah, and then what happens after And then that? we have a final panel. Then what happens after that? Oh, <laughs> and then we have some key takeaways. Pardon? Then we have some key takeaways. For who? For that. That will then determine what happens after that. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully there will be some, you know, who could do what as part of those key takeaways. 